So we have a uh, chapter four factors that we shift the demand curve. <laughs> So yeah, before we go, this is getting started. We have a case study of holiday trades, treat. Jacob Batudo works for a big oil company in Kenya. In 2016, he was promoted and received a 20% pay increase. He decided to spend some of his extra pay on a treat for him and his wife. He had seen the television advert recently played by a travel company. The advert offered discounts on holidays to the Sicilians. He knew that his wife would enjoy the, a treat abroad, so went ahead and booked the old holiday. In addition to the price, what two factors might affect the quantity demanded for holidays in Sicily? So one of the factors that could affect the quantity demanded for holidays in Sicily is the level of income. So the level of income can affect the demand. And the other one is availability of substitutes to the holiday. So those are the two factors aside price that could affect the quantity demanded of holiday. Because holiday is a good too, but it is, uh, we don't call it, it is, uh, it is not, uh, it is an abstract good and it's a service. Do you understand? In, it's intangible. It's an intangible goods. Intangible good. Is it clear? All right. Question two. They said, what would you expect to happen to the quantity demanded for holidays in Sicilies during a recession? During a recession, recession means that there's economic decline in two consecutive, in two consecutive uh, quarters. That means for each six months that passes by in a year, there is economic decline. Economic activity is falling down. So if economic activity is falling down, that means income level in that economy would fall. So people, households will not be able to spend on holiday. They would rather spend on needs because holiday at that time will become a luxury. Do you understand? So as soon as economic activity is in decline, unemployment will increase in the economy. So if unemployment increases, the level of income would fall. So if the level of income falls, people will start spending more of their income on necessities like food, clothing, and shelter. They won't think about holiday because it's just like a luxury. It's a want. So they won't think about wants, rather they will think about needs. So holiday in Sicily, the demand for holiday in Sicily would reduce. Is it clear? So that, take, that takes us to factors that may shift the demand curve. Factors that we should, price is the main factor that affects the quantity demand. We talked about price before, which is uh, it leads to movement along the demand curve, contraction or expansion. Expansion when the price falls, contraction when the price reduces, when the price increases. So there are other factors now which we're going to start to talk about. The first one is advertising. So for advertising, this is the way of creating awareness about your products to or to customers. You know, in a competitive market, in a competitive environment, where Products are almost substitutes. So you have the same customers. There's no customer in heaven. All the customers are here. So all businesses want to sell to all businesses want to sell to the same customer. As a result, you need to heavily invest on advertisement. So if you invested on advertisement and it's successful, it is expected that the demand for your goods increases. Do you get it? So a successful advertisement will shift the demand curve of your good rightward from D1 to D2. That's it. A successful advertisement. But a business that is unable to, to, to invest on advertisement might find its pro demand for its products reduces, shifting the demand curve for its products from D1 to D3, left toward. Is it clear? That's about advertisement. As, that, as a result of that, the quantity, so the quantity demanded would fall also. So that's about advertisement. So we'll go to the case study. So for the case study, here we have demand and advertising. We have, we have 2014 to 2020. It's like calculate the percentage increase in predicted advertising expenditure between 2014 and 2020. So we need 2014 figure and 2020 figure. So for 2014, it is 488,480. And 2020 is 674,240. Do you get that? So the percentage increase will be the difference between 2020 and 2014 divided by 2014. The difference between 2020 and 2014 divided by 2014, so, multiplied by 100. Not six, the figures, I'm talking about the figures in 2014. The difference in the figures in 26, 2020 and 2014, divided by the figure of 2014, 
multiplied by 100. So that's 674240 minus 488480. It gives us 185760 divided by 488480 multiplied by 100. So that gives us 38.03%. So that's the answer. Is it clear? Question two. Why are some businesses prepared to spend so heavily on advertisement? So businesses may be, may be prepared to spend heavily on advertisement as they want to gain more revenue. They want to increase their revenue. And spending on advertisement might allow them to gain more customers. And gaining more customers will increase their revenue and sales. Do you get that? So that's about that. They will go to income. Income, they say, I wrote, income is the amount of money a household earned. The amount of money you earn, that is your income. So as your level of income increases, maybe your wages increases or your salaries increases, your disposable income will increase. That means the amount of money you want to save or spend will increase. So if the amount of money you can save or spend increases, the demand for goods and services would increase. Shifting the demand curve for normal goods, right one. Because income is related to normal goods. And normal goods are goods that we demand for. Or the demand for uh, normal goods are the goods that the, their demand increases whenever the level of income increases. So these are the goods you think about when you have more money. We call them normal goods. But if you don't have more, if you have less money, those goods that comes to your mind are called inferior goods. Is it clear? That's about that. I think that is clear. All right. So we go to that's about income. So income would shift, an increase in income would shift the demand for normal goods rightward from D1 to D2, while inferior goods will shift leftward from D1 to D3. D3. We go to fashion and taste. Fashion and taste, demand patterns change over time due to changes in fashion. Fashion is the latest. So what happens when new products are produced, the old ones, the demand for old ones reduces, yes or no? So that's what they're talking about here. Do you get it? The demand for old ones will reduce. So shifting the demand for old fashion clothes or old fashion goods leftward and the demand for new fashion or latest rightward. Is it clear? Is it clear, please? Is it clear? Yes. So the next one is prices of substitutes. Are you there? For prices of substitutes, I wrote, demand for, okay, for substitute I wrote, substitute goods are goods bought as an alternative to another, but perform the same function as that other goods. It's a substitute because you bought it to because it can perform the same function as the other one, like Coca-Cola and Pepsi. So if you if maybe you like taking Coca-Cola, but there's no Coca-Cola, you take Pepsi. That is substitute. So what happens if the price of a substitute like Coca-Cola falls, the demand for Coke would reduce. So people will start buying Pepsi because the price of Pepsi has fallen, which is a substitute to Coca-Cola. Is it clear? Go to compliments. For price of compliments, are you there? Compliments, these are goods that are purchased together with another goods, like car and petrol. They are compliments. Laptop and charger, they are compliments. Do you understand? So if the, if the price of a complement increases, the goods that are used together with it, the demand for such goods might also fall. Do you understand? So if the, the, if, the, the, uh, if the price of charger increases, the demand for laptop might fall. Do you understand? That is what they are talking about there. Is it clear? Then the next one is demographics. When we talk about demographics, we are talking about the study of human population and how it changes population and how it changes. So logic, basically here we're talking about increasing population. If the population of an economy increases, the demand for goods and services in such economy would increase. Shifting the demand, shifting the demand curve rightward. Is it, is it clear? That is population. So we'll go to activity two. Are you there? The population of the UAE has grown significantly since 2000. Between 2000 and 2010, it grew from 2.9 to 8.3. The UAE has a very large immigration immigrant population. It is estimated that around 90% of the population were born overseas, as the figure shows. So most of the immigrants are attracted to the country by employment opportunities, employment opportunities. 
There has been a huge boom in the construction industry. For example, the UAE government has invested revenues from the sale of oil and gas into infrastructure development, residential real estate, and commercial properties. The UAE has the largest difference in the male and female ratio in the world, and, and that's the rest about it. So the population of UAE increases from 1980 to 2020, like 100%. That's from one to 10 million. You see it there. Yes. So now we go to the question. The first question says, why has the population of the UAE increased so sharply in recent years? Give one reason in your explanation. The population of UAE has increased sharply because it is attractive to employment for immigrants. People think they can get a job there. So a lot of immigrants are going there because they need a job. Is it clear? Yes. Question two. How will the change in the size of the UAE's population affect demand? Here I wrote, there's an increase in the size of the population in the UAE. This will increase the demand for goods and services, shifting the demand curve rightward. Clear? Yes. Question three. A significant number of the people migrating to the UAE are Southeast Asian. How might this affect demand patterns in the UAE? I wrote, the demand for Southeast Asian goods may increase as a result, because there are a lot of Southeast Asians there. So that means the demand for their goods and services would increase. Is it clear? Yes. We go to the MCP. Cars and petrol are examples of which goods? B, complementary goods, okay? Question two. A rise in the price of car insurance may have which effect? A rise in the price of car insurance, car insurance will shift the demand curve for cars to the left, okay? We go to global demand for cars, case study. Are you there? Yes. Ever since car became, cars became commercially available, demand for them has continued to increase. In 2016, it was predicted that 76.5 million new cars would be purchased worldwide. Rising demand is currently driven by rapid economic growth in countries such as India and, and China. Owning cars in such countries is a new experience for huge numbers of people. As people in developing countries become wealthier, as a result of economic growth, more cars are purchased. In, in recent years, the demand for electric vehicle EVs has increased in 2015. Total sales of EVs reached 1 million. It is estimated that by 2040, around 35% of all cars purchased will be EVs. This growth in the demand for EVs is being driven by government investment in the public battery charging infrastructure. With the rate of introduction of fast DC chargers, growing by 350% in China alone in 2015, the improvement in the driving range of EVs. Also, if oil prices recover to the pre-2014 levels, when oil was 140 a barrel, the incentive to buy an EV will be even stronger. So that's the demand for cars. So the first question says, suggest one reason why global demand for cars is rising. A rising demand for cars, for global cars, is as a result of increasing wealth. People, are, people become richer now yes. in this Globally, so that's the reason. Is it clear? Yes. Question two. Discuss the possible factor that might affect the demand for electric cars in the future. Give two factors in your analysis. One is price. If the price of electric cars rises in the future, the demand will fall. If the price falls in the future, the demand for electric cars will rise yes. in the future. That's clear. The second point is substitute. So substitute like train is a sub train is a substitute to cars. Yes or no? Yes. Good. So if Train becomes cheaper in the future. If the price of train become, train, uh, using train becomes cheaper than buying electronic cars in the long run, then the demand for train uh, for electric cars will fall in the future. Clear. Are the electric cars will fall in the future will increase. Is it clear? Is it clear? Yes. Question three. Is so it what effect? Will the following, what effect will the following have on global demand for cars? An increase in global incomes. An increase in global incomes will increase the demand for cars as cars will be considered as normal goods. People have more money, they'll buy a car. The demand for cars will increase, yes or no? Good. The second question, B, it said, a rise in the price of petrol. Petrol is a complementary group, is a complementary to cars. So a rise in petrol would reduce the demand for cars. Do you understand? Yes. And they said we should represent it with a graph. So this is the graph for A. For A, 
uh, an increase in demand and an increase in income will shift the demand curve right up from D1 to D2. But an increase in the price of petrol, which is a complement to cars, will reduce, will shift the demand curve for cars leftward from D1 to D3. Is it clear? Yes. Question four. They say, what is the difference between a movement along the demand curve and a shift in the demand curve? Use a diagram in your explanation. So movement along the demand curve is caused as a result of a change in price. So a change in price will lead to movement along the demand curve, which will lead to either contraction or expansion. Contraction when the price increases, expansion when the price falls. And the graph is this. Contraction or expansion down. That's movement along the demand curve. Then for shift in the demand curve, shift in the demand curve is as a result of a change in non-pricing factors, such as income, uh, substitute goods, complementary goods, fashion and taste. These are the these are the reasons why we have shift in the demand curve. And shift in the demand curve will make price to be constant. So it will either shift rightward from D1 to D2 or leftward from D1 to D3. Is it clear? Yes. Any question about it? That's all.